Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the audience, what is up? It is your boys with Halo 3 done segmented. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. This is in fact Halo 3 done segmented. That is right. After several Augusts in the making, we are proud to finally present our finalized versions. Thanks to the hard work of everyone here in the Discord call, I'll let you all introduce yourself, lads. Uh, I'm Blaze, and I did Storm in this project. Hi, I'm Danza, I did Sierra. I'm Dark, um, I have no runs in this project, I'm more behind the scenes. I did a couple of runs back in the day, but nothing of this quality. I'm Fallen Ultima, and I did Cortana and Halo. I'm Hark, and I did Floodgate. My name is Paradoxic, and I did Crow's Nest. And uh, I'm Sorix, and I did uh, Ark and Covey. And I'm the Mibulus. I tried to do Covey, failed miserably, so they <laughs> gave me a rival instead. And, I mean, that's that's me. I'm moral support. Arrivals, Thanks, rivals, you know, a tricky, Thank you, little, a tricky little mission to have. Thank you. Also, uh, Pope... A lot of intricate skills. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, we, we had Pokemon King as well. Did Sabo, but he can't be here today. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I did. I did just want to bring to everyone's attention uh, uh, the history of this project because I think it's quite interesting. This project started as far back as 2012 um, with uh, a couple of the old runners in the community that unfortunately are no longer with us. Uh, but. The Halo 3 Done Segmented project holds a special place in my heart specifically because it was one of the things that got me started speedrunning Halo 3. So it's really cool to finally see the project come to fruition um, uh, almost eight years later. Yeah, the, the project has gone through several iterations. The one you'll be watching here is is three years old, about. It's the, it's the oldest level. Yeah. And most of the levels have, have gone through several versions in that time. And of course, we also have gone through, um, over the years with the project, they started on in 2012 now, eight years ago, um, with, of course, the classic version of Halo 3 on the Xbox 360. I'd just like to give a shout out of the names as well for everybody that was involved over the years. A Hipfire, Rawson, Shifty Time, um, Dark Devastation, Araxade, Sliding Ghost, Not Guard, Chapified, and Alien Flow. And if I missed anybody, I am sorry. Um, but yeah, there's a hell of a lot of people that have been involved in this product over the years. Yeah, like everyone has done something towards what you're going to watch today. If it's, you know, a level or a strat or something you're going to see here. Yeah, the people who've performed the final level have done a great job. But um, there's so many people who have contributed strats over the years or evolved each level. It's been uh, quite a community effort to bring your all together. Yeah, absolutely. So many exciting strats as well. First, when it just started, it was just DC. I was just having a It is worth noting, I think, too, that this version that we're playing here is run on uh, uh, the Master Chief collection. And I believe Sierra is about to start. Yeah. Yeah, so this is Sierra. This is the oldest level in the project, I think. It's basically three years old now. Um, it went through four, four different versions. Uh, this is the fastest one. Um, so to start off, um, we start using a movement technique called slide jump in, which um, is used throughout the run. Um, which, when you land on a sloped surface while crouching and uncrouching, it gives you a little speed boost. So you're going to see that numerous times throughout the run. Uh, and in combination with other weapons, it can give a really a large boost. Um, so at the start, you're just trying to optimize the movement and the get through as quickly as I can. So, I'm gonna hit another slide jump here. And that's mainly the start of Sierra. Uh, this part is really tricky on Legendary, uh, trying to get past this section. Um, in a full game run, usually you would uh, perform a trigger skip so that you don't need to fight any of these enemies here. Um, but obviously that costs time, probably about five, five seconds, five, seven seconds. Yeah, it's, it's around four or five. Yeah. So, um, for segmented, you just want to plow through all the enemies and um, hope you survive, really. Um, next part coming up is um, the infamous uh, moose jump section. Uh, shoutouts to Moose for finding this. 
most um, elusive person <laughs> ever in his in, uh, Halo history. Yeah. Who is Moose? <laughs> so this section is um, you just do a slide jump, do um, some tricky jumps here on these rocks, and you can skip this action. Um, the jump is tricky, but actually getting through without damage isn't too difficult because if you're really quick, the enemies don't actually react to you. So you got quite a bit of time to work with if you get some good slides. Um, yeah. Yeah, coming up is a standard section here of the cave. Um, always want to target the brute because if he dies, then um, everything else starts to cower in fear and run away. So you can get away without taking any damage there. And um, one of the first. Uh, I guess big tricks coming up is a Cortana skip. On the ground there is a trigger, which um, activates something called a Cortana moment, which is a cutscene overlaid under the game, and that slows your movement down uh, quite a lot. So we just jump over the trigger for the precise jump. Um, and this is being followed up by another trick here. Um, this is a cone launch, so I use a frag grenade and a brief shot to boost down past the enemies. Um, and that's only actually available on Legendary because you cannot get the bridge shot um, on easy before that far. Yeah, yeah, this is a sniper forest section. This is the segment I probably spent the most time on because it was excruciatingly difficult to actually land this launch and also kill the enemies. Um, I had to use a bubble there to survive and I had to shoot these enemies on MCC because the AI is generally slightly more aggressive. And getting doing that launch and getting through was nigh on impossible without killing anything. So, yeah, I had to, especially on legendary. Yeah, I had to take my shots there to get through. Um, we got the classic gap jump skip here. Instead of going all the way around and walking up this ledge, we do a nice slide and grenade jump over to skip that and um, <clears throat> keep powering on through here. Um, and now coming up is the dam section, which is kind of the crux of this level. There's so much time to be lost and gained in this action, so I um, have to try and optimize it the most we can. So, usually on Legendary, you go underneath the dam and take a very safe route to the um, uh, cell to free Johnson. But in order to progress this mission, you need to reach Johnson as fast as you can. So, going over the top is the fastest way, but incredibly risky to do. So, um, I use a plasma grenade there to wipe out those enemies. And uh, my main priority is getting rid of those beam jackals because that regen gave me enough health to live off the brute. So I just need to get the one shot beams out of the way. Um, I get extremely lucky here as well because I think the grunt or something actually sticks the whole group. And that wipes out all the enemies here because the next objective is to kill as many enemies as I can to make the um, uh, pelican at the end come in quicker. Um, also, this was really difficult too because it was all in one segment. I had no checkpoints or anything to uh, make this work. Um, yeah, back from before jumping up to the middle section, first yeah. time. Crazy yeah. amount of skill. Um, so yeah, so here we're just plowing through the enemies, killing as much as we can. It's bit, essentially the easy route, um, but uh, obviously trying to make it work on Legendary. This saves a lot of time being able to do damn this quickly um, mm. over the standard route of just camping out the cell and uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely the biggest you, time saver on this level over yeah. the IL. And um I do a little launch, here launch to by get the way. Oh so um, clean. The um, funny thing about that um, launch actually before we end the level. One of the main reasons I found that is because I wasn't able to get over in time to do the early power. Sorry. Nice. What was the what final was the time for that level? That's... Uh final time was five ten. Really good. Right. So um, this is Crow's Nest. Uh, we already did something at the beginning there. We skipped getting a battle rifle, which you would normally do on Legendary, but it's slow. So instead, we're going to rely on our pistol and our AR uh, for this starting position. Uh, movement, sliding as you would normally. The first cool trick happens right here in this first hangar. This took uh, a couple weeks. I'm going to throw a grenade and pinch myself between that truck and the wall to shoot me forwards. And now just simply surviving is difficult. Um, I got lucky with some plasmas here so I could try and clear out the enemies without having to weave because that would take us time. And there you go, yeah. two weeks. <laughs> it looks a little shorter. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> now we begin the uh, what's affectionately called the auto scroller section of the level. Pool. It is not actually an auto scroller. You can waste time, uh, but it's very difficult to speed it up beyond a certain point because you're relying, you're waiting for enemy spawns. Um, so what I'm actually doing here is uh, focusing on on where the grenades are dropping uh, and thinking about both my grenade count come the end of the uh, hangar. Uh, as well as my ammo count in my VR. Easy headshots. Yeah, there's, there's not too much going on here. You just had, there's three waves of uh, phantoms and you just gotta clear them out. Yeah, I do do uh, a trick. Uh, yeah. That's a It's a slasso technique, actually. I'm looking for spike grenades here, which is why I'm running around. Because I want spike grenades before I leave. Oh, another thing I'd like to add is you notice he's meleeing to delay a checkpoint. Yeah. In case, in case I think it's in case you don't get grenades, right? You don't want. Correct. The equipment, yeah. So you, you'll probably notice that a couple of times in, in this run where people are just seemingly meleeing the air for no reason to prevent getting checkpoints because uh, because they want checkpoints at the right time to be able to segment segment it properly. Yeah. There's a couple of so, different ways to make checkpoints, but shooting, uh, meleeing is the most common one. Mm -hmm. That 360 doesn't save any time, it just looks cool. <laughs> Atta <laughs> boy, Para. So, so, there's, uh, the, um, the PC's gone. Yes, and you'll notice I'm trying to back up and do this kill from farther away than you normally would. My, the, the door opening up ahead relies on all these enemies being dead. Three grunts are going to drop, but I'm so far back, it's really hard to hit them. And so when I'm just relying that my marines are good enough shots to kill them, mm -hmm. which is why I'm meleeing, normally the door would be open now, but it's not, it's not, it's not. Aha, my oh. marines succeeded. It's very nice. Perfect. The one and only time that they uh, do something that's useful in, in the game for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another thing, normally you would pick up plasmas in that hallway if you could, but uh, that would waste time, so I didn't. And I believe we're going to come up on the first DC clip of the run. Yeah. Uh, this is a kind of funny clip, uh, because it's quite difficult on Legendary. That grenade I just threw has to kill all five of the drones in order for this clip to be somewhat feasible, otherwise the drones will kill you right away. We clip through that door, which avoids us having to kill all the drones in that room, and saves us, I don't know, seven seconds? Yeah, I think it's around seven then, yeah. That's it's a bit more reason. legendary than easy, because yeah. there are more drones. All right. That's the reason yeah. why we switched to MCC, uh, yeah, no from, from here onwards, this uh, these couple sections are quite different. I had to manipulate the enemies so that they would drop a DC in this hallway so that I didn't have to go out of my way to pick up a DC. And then uh, I'm going to great launch off this grate into what I believe might be the only case of vertical DC launching in the run. This is one of the coolest tricks in the run coming up. Yeah, that was a pretty great launch. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so I'm going to go right into the elevator. <laughs> and then use a vertical launch to skip the elevator ride, which is quite oh. a time save. Wow. The, so difficulty, the difficulty is that you need to get on this, and now there's a five month gap between these segments. <laughs> this trick was discovered in co-op. I kill this brute so that I can kill this spawn on the same tick that they arrive. And what, that, what happens is the game doesn't begin to count down the number of enemies which allows me to kill these two remaining enemies and skip a wave from spawning. That trick took five months to successfully get, uh, working on and off. Uh, it's totally not feasible in an IL, but it looks super cool to get it in segmented. Go, go, that is, that is, those two segments right there is my, personally my favorite part of this whole yeah. run. And getting on top of yeah. that pelican after the vertical DC is really hard. Actually, it's, it's actually really difficult trying to manage everything once you've done that. Bit. Now, unfortunately, MCC lost a save there, so I had to. There's a slight cut. This is called Pipe Ride. 
Okay. That's cool. That is so such a nice. Doing this oh, part without camo is insanely risky, insanely yeah. hard. Yeah, there are snipers uh, that I managed to avoid. Okay, and now um, this section surprisingly only took me like four tries. I just got lucky. What a god. Yeah. Pure skill, dude. <laughs> no luck involved. So the, the goal there is to get to that button as fast as possible to press it. And now I'm killing the enemies in this room. I'm running into a load zone right there, so that I load a BSP. And then doing a backwards clip into a Cortana moment. You'll see that in the IL. What that allows me to do is skip quite a large section of the level, backtracking. Uh, and then this is my favorite launch. We're gonna go straight to the elevator. Perfect. Nice bombs. Nice there we go. Uh, yeah, I don't actually remember what the time of that level was. Does anyone remember? Uh, I can check real quick. Well, the reason we triggered oh, it doesn't say. is because although it's slightly slower movement speed, it also grants you invincibility in the moment, so we have to use that to actually survive the clip. It was yeah. a 7.24 in game time. Really fast. Your nice. Yeah. Barely slower than the easy IL, only because uh, of the extra wave you get in the hangar, which loses about 45 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it was, it was a super fun segment. Yeah. Super okay. good level. Now we're on to Sahara Highway. This was done by Porkum King. Unfortunately, he can't join us now, but um, many of you know he's a Sahara legend. And um, <laughs> it's so a very hard. optimal run. Yeah. So um, the main thing about this level is um, optimizing the drive so that uh, you take the best line and um, you don't snake. That's one of the most important things is not snaking your hog at all, which is when the um, the, ho the hog uh, goes left and right, because that costs a lot of time. Um, it's so important to take the right line because you can bleed so much time um, by taking um, corners incorrectly or taking the wrong line. Yeah. Um, so straightforward drive. Um, this is actually a really difficult corner here to get right. He's kept a lot of speed going up the hill. Usually you can use a lot, lose a lot going up there. So that was really well done. You always come to a complete stop. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. He's getting That's a, like a nice sniper boost there. Well. Yeah, those guys can actually flip you if you're unlucky. <laughs> yeah. I. Um, I just would like to say, uh, I do find it funny, this level is so unique compared to all the levels in the game. Mm -hmm. It's the only full driving level. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so you just flew through that section then, um, not taking hardly any damage. The Marines are actually really good in the hub. They can do yeah. quite a lot of, and they take a lot of damage for you too. Um, yep. with all... Without the Marines, a lot of this would be near impossible. Yep. Exactly, they sponge so much damage for you. Um, nice grenade that opened the door. And then, that was a good example there. You saw the Marine died, but essentially protected him to be able to um, save a hog and save himself going through this level. Um, so now we got the gap jump coming up here. Um, usually done with a gravity lift, but um, with some precise driving, you can keep the momentum through the barricades and go through to the other side. That's a really, really nice. That was oh, basically wow. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely you didn't even lose any speed. Yeah. It was really, really good. Um, so just driving on through here. Um, this next path can also be incredibly tricky because these choppers can ruin your day. So um, I have no doubt this took a few tries to get right. Luckily, we didn't shoot at all. Yeah. Um, so now the next yeah. part is um, skipping the fuel rod here. Yeah, no fuel rod, and a nice little rock climb there. You can hit your front left wheel on the rock and oh, boost so the good. hog all the way up. And that was a really nice deflection of the rail uh, of the rail there. Yeah, yeah. keep all the momentum uh, going. So now the ending, um, you have to destroy a shade, uh, or kill the grunt within the shade, and destroy the shield door you see at the back there. And you also have to be close enough to the shield door to trigger the end of the level. So what he's doing is he's throwing one grenade at the shield door and then two at the shade to kill the grunt inside because they're a bit stronger and legendary. 
Nice. That I'm, time I'm was um. Actually... Sorry, that that time was three oh eight, I think. Yeah, three oh eight. Nice. Yeah, I've never seen the two grenade strat on legendary Chief, for the turret. That's impressive. Yeah, is off the floor again. Cool. So this is um, this is Storm. A lot of Storm has um, loads and parts of the level that are basically down to uh, you're on a timer essentially. And on the start here, this is of course an auto scroller, and you the end the button for the first lake bed. Uh, it's around about 57 seconds, I think, is the earliest that you can press it on. And this first segment here did take me a hell of a long time to be able to get onto the button with a ghost and DC in hand on Legendary. It doesn't look like much, but this this did take me quite some time to uh, get the perfect segment for. Yeah, manipulating enemy uh, drops is something that a lot of us did in this segment, and it really adds to how much time you have to put into each segment. Yeah, because you could get you could spend all that time and get the perfect send segment, but then you don't get the deployable cover drop, and it's all over. It is worth mentioning um, there were a lot of first lake bed strats that we did theorize and try to do, um, clip through into the second lake bed and things like this, but ultimately it was it was it was something that we couldn't quite figure out, and we don't we don't think it's possible. But there was at some point. Um, we were trying to, I was trying to like DC clip through the right side of the first lake bed to uh, to get through. This is where my projects actually linked with some of my old footage. You can see a slight light change there. Okay, so we're going to start the second lake bed here um, with some really long range rocket shots. The idea here is to uh, kill these phantoms before they even land. Uh, quick shout out to Andrew for this lineup. Uh, we basically are firing two here and another two. Luckily, I got the third one to hit, so it dies um, before it even before that one even uh, hit, hit. The fourth doesn't even connect with it, and then another three on this one um, to kill that. The the annoying thing here was what took. Me, a long time was to get the um, the mongoose in the exact set right spot after you've killed this, these two um, phantoms to be able to then get across to the next wave and in position before it comes in. And you'll see me do a, a couple, another rocket shot here at the core of the left phantom. This is to try, again try and preserve, preserve the as many, many rockets as I can. And I need all six of these fjord shots to be able to kill this second. Um, phantom here with four shots on its core and then two to clean up any ghosts because again the, the most annoying thing in the lake beds is the loads actually triggering and the, I, th I think it's, it's it's basically down to the ghosts and, and the grunts and stuff that prevent loads but that, that did take a good while to get. Um, so we actually have a DC here and um, it used to be that you had to clip through to we're skipping the scarab completely but you used to have to either clip using the DC from the outside um, and you wouldn't be able to get basically have a DC at this point. Uh, so I'm actually using some melee um, uh, timing strats here to make sure that I hit the first frame of this con this katana movement. And again, using a, a nade jump to try and keep that momentum through the, uh, through the moment. So this is the uh, this is the segment that took the longest. This this took I'd say weeks to get to get good. Basically, this is the double DC ending, and we're we're flying past loads of um, enemies there, and we having I'm having to clear out all of these brutes to get a second DC, um, so that I I can maybe get a slight chance of getting a checkpoint here. Luckily, I did get it, and it was inside the DC uh, that it gave it to me. So ridiculous. And I don't think it would have been possible to end it with, without getting that. Um, the rocket jump there. Um, that rocket was actually needed to get the height needed to go over the, um, the box um, and manage to uh, basically cut the corner off um, to get the most ideal sideways from that. Dude, that ending is absolutely insane. Yeah, <laughs> insane. Even like second wake bed was so good. Clean, very clean. Like so even after getting that checkpoint in the DC, it still took you. Like a good week or two uh, off so of that. So wait, it real quick, what was, was the time on that? 
The time on that was 4.39. Um, Jesus. Nice. It's spreading all all right. the city. Yeah, this is Floodgate. Uh, we're starting the level off with some slide jumps. Um, there's a trick right here that I discovered uh, called a magic carpet. And it saves, you know, about a second or so. And um, it took me a while to get a checkpoint after. Um, but yeah, this is the first box launch. Um, I got a pretty good. You can get maybe a little bit better one, but it, it was a pretty good one. Um, and now the second box launch. Um, but really clean. Dorsen, by the way, that's the cone launch. Um, and uh, another box launch into a DC. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is. So, someone count the box launches. Yeah. Oh it's a God. very <laughs> there's, there's quite a few. Is nuts. Yeah. Very fast. Alright. This is that's a oh that's God. a new version of fun. doing the Cortana skip. It saves quite a bit of time. And it's actually not it's actually it actually wasn't that hard. It looks so good though. <laughs> oh yeah. And now we're at the cutscene. And I managed to do it in a single jump cycle, which uh, saves quite a bit of time for the DC launch right into the floor. And this launch right here uh, was pretty good. Um, it's actually uh, the only part of the mission that you can actually die on the enemies. And now we're on the final DC launch. It's really good right into the hole. Well, the last one's a clip. It's actually amazing. It, the this run is so fast to, to even talk about all the tricks. That you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, like... it's it's pretty much impossible to mention everything. <laughs> and uh, this is the DC clip. It's the hardest clip in the game, in my opinion. And it took me like five hours to get this segment. Which nice. I <laughs> it's a lot of time for like for like one trick. Yeah. But yeah, that was so gate so in two <laughs> minutes cute. and uh, fifteen seconds. I'm sorry, I blinked and I so... missed it. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like we've just started. I know, right? I think it was a bit a bit too fast, actually. Can you slow it down so I can enjoy it more? <laughs> the the arrival cutscene is a minute longer than that blood guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so we're in, we're in Ark now. This is one of the levels I did. Um, the, the first uh, minute or so isn't too interesting because we have the pelican cutscene and then we have to walk a bit to get to the first section. But here the, the text starts I guess. I get I go for a slide jump there and uh, getting that slide jump perfect actually took quite a while. And then I have to get a DC and a boot shot here and then do a boost off those little capping stools and then I actually get the box to launch into me there and give me another little boost to save about point two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, that was really lucky. I was not going for that. Uh, did you have to manipulate the DC drop? Uh, I I uh, was able to get a checkpoint where I could get it every time. So yeah, I, I did sort of manipulate here. Ma manipulate it so I could get it, but it was just restarting the level a couple of times. And here I'm delaying the checkpoint, so I get a uh, checkpoint close to the disc, because I'm about to do a launch for this deployable cover. So I actually don't kill that boot on purpose, because if I killed him, then the, the grunts would actually aggro on me for some reason. But if I left him without shields, then they would leave me alone, pretty much. Oh my god. And then, yeah, we do a launch this ghost. It's not perfect, but with the setup I did, so, uh, so close to the rocket launcher, it wasn't really possible to get any better than that. Uh, at least from, from my grinding. And then... Uh, we take the ghost here over, over these cliffs, and we're gonna skip a trigger uh, to spawn the next set of enemies. Uh, another thing about the DC launches, you actually have to hit a trigger uh, in the middle of that in order to not soft block. And that was uh, one of the things I, I missed in my first version of this level. I didn't, I didn't realize that, so I had to redo a lot of this. And then this is just uh, a pretty, pretty cool fight, I guess. We have to clear out this whole area in, for the, in order to pr progress the mission. And I also have to get a deploy, deployable cover drop at, at some point from this fight. So there's four boots here that I need to clear. Um, and then a ghost and 
a couple AA wraiths to take out. This is so difficult as well to juggle all all these different um, groups of enemies you have to manage because they all come at you at slightly different times and you have to know where to look, know where yeah, enemies. Yeah, and it's never right the, the same time. path, exact pathing twice. So you've got to like be on your toes all the time, make sure. Yeah, yeah. really well. Is it, is it just like playing this section is one of my favorite things in the game because it's it's just so fun. So it's different every time. <laughs> Looking at the sky to make the yeah. frigate come in. Yeah. Uh, Bungie wanted you to look at look at their fancy uh, dawn cutscene, I guess they made. So if you could look at it, it appears faster, so you're more likely to see it in a playthrough. And I use a music cue there to know exactly when to go because I have to hit those black bars in order to to spawn the next area properly. And yeah, this is this is tankless. <laughs> Inbounds tankless, I suppose. Uh, you must have died so yeah. much times, did you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it was insane how many times I died uh, to get that segment. This is something people have been trying for like Legendary and even HVDS for yeah. such a long time. <laughs> this, was oh, the, in... this is a really creative thing here. So you shoot that fuel rod and it has... The fuel rod shot has what's called a, a scariness factor associated with it. And yeah. so smaller enemies like like grunts uh, and even ghosts and, and jackals will sort of dodge it or get run away normally. But when they're in ghosts, they'll just like slowly float away like that and pretty much ignore you. And it's super useful for that section. And yeah, yeah so, so here is the the biggest skip in this level. This is something a segmented only thing that you would never see before in an IL, so I have to place a DC there and then pick up another one because I have to get two deployable covers for this and then I I DC clip with this <laughs> with oh, this deployable cool. cover already respawned and getting a DC clip with a, a, a deployable cover like that is in is a hundred times more difficult yeah. than just doing it normally where you drop it I don't think I've ever done an IL yeah. yeah. And then I have to do another DC launch and segment uh, and survive it there. Uh, as you can see, I went zero shields. I probably clipped uh, clipped through there over a hundred times and died before I before I survived it. That's probably my favorite segment I've seen so far throughout this entire project. <laughs> to totally. Yeah. DC launching off the respawning DCs. It's That's almost some, perfect. Crazy. It's a really smart use there of the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually. That was the only way, because this scarab is, is sort of on a cycle where uh, you can you can speed it up up to a certain point, but and then then you can't speed it up anymore. In order to get it as fast as po as is possible, I actually had to do that scarab slide. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I wouldn't make it on time to not lose time, so to speak. I would just say normally we take the chopper here, so taking that. Uh, Warthog is a cool segmented strat. Yeah. And then normal scare board here. And uh, yeah, here's another thing you would normally not see. I'm I'm gonna take the hog uh, up to to get a ghost, and I'll be using that ghost soon to uh, to save a little bit of time. And this was actually a really this segment took a lot longer than I thought it would. I probably spent about 10 hours on this, and you'll see why in a few se in a, in a couple of seconds why why it was so hard to get the segment. Oh my god. So yeah, that, there there are quite a lot of enemies here <laughs> <laughs> trying to kill oh you. My. Just unreal. <laughs> I cannot believe you survived that. I can't either. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so... This is, this is sort of, I guess, a bit of an auto scroll. You have to wait for the, the Arbiter and the Marines come down here before this next section start. But we can actually kill one of the Marines, because if you do not kill him, then he will start a dialogue with Guilty Spark. Uh, so killing him saves like another, uh, about 10 seconds, because that dialogue just won't occur. And this is gonna be, look really weird. This is one of the one of the side effects of clipping through the the door earlier that we didn't realize before this segment happened. 
So this is gonna be, look really weird. It's gonna look like a cut here. That is not a cut. That is just how weird this becomes. Uh, Spark has been sitting here trying to open this door for about 10 odd, 10 extra seconds than he would normally. And then finally, it does some sort of soft log check, I think, and just fixes itself. So, uh, originally I thought this level would be about 10 seconds faster, but because of that, uh, it's a bit slower than uh, I thought it was going to be. Uh, can I just there, say Yeah. Go ahead. Take, take, taking the ghost inside is a strat that people have talked about using, but no one has ever actually done it. Yeah. It only saves five seconds, I think I timed it too, and the driving is really difficult to do well. I, you can take the chopper in there as well. I used to take that in just boost down the hallway, but yeah. That's... Yeah. And then I got a deployable cover as well here. Uh, I'm gonna use this one as well. I think this level probably has the most DC uses out of any. Um, but yeah, pretty standard here. And then we're gonna use this deployable cover to skip these next couple enemies because the way the, the ending level works, um, ending of the level works, the none of no enemies can be alive past that door where I threw the DC and the level will end. So I killed the, uh, the hammer guy with a spike grenade, that's really precise. And then I'll be basically spawn killing these guys. Shout out to Arak Sage for this ending strat. It looks really cool. <laughs> and then nading these last guys. And normally the load would appear right after those guys died, but another side effect of this of the clip to the, the door earlier is that the load takes a couple seconds to appear for some reason. And the DC on the middle, it just makes them despawn, right? Any leftover invisible yeah. grits. It, um, oh! That's like, that that, like, that oh. shot right there is my favorite strat. Oh, that, that was, by the way, that was first try. <laughs> oh! oh <okay. laughs> and what was the time on that? It was in 9... 9.28. Uh, I think it's... Is it the big... No, this level. No, I won't spoil it, actually. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, this is beach fight. This should have been one of the biggest grinds, but it only took me about, I think, half an hour to get this segment. But it, sh it probably should have been the longest segment. And, uh, yeah, it's done. Which is crazy. For, for those who don't know, there are enemies that you, you have to time the spawning of different waves of enemies so that you can one-shot them with a laser. Yeah. And, even, yeah. and then, even if you get the timing right, there's still some luck involved. Yeah, because even if you get every single of the spawning, one of the spawning enemies, you still have to get lucky with... Because there's one brute that doesn't spawn in the group, and you have to strafe into your laser shot. Uh, in order to actually, at least with the, the way I do it. Yeah, those four not one to get every single one. dead in that first group. I also want to say that Beach Fight was probably expected to be like the longest segment to get out of like anything in the entire project it to took me yeah. it took me two months to get a 26 <laughs> yeah i think that was a 26 as well and optim uh, like the theoretical max i think is a 24 but it's just uh infeasible to get really yeah you have to rely on actually marines to do their job and that's and with hitting that insane god laser it's just so such yeah so we're, we're taking the the warthog into the this part here and uh we're gonna do a launch here with the power drain this i i just i was like <laughs> when I saw that. that's uh <laughs> shout out to sleepless blue for that strat yeah uh, <laughs> it's it's a really cool launch it's kind of crazy how much power you can get from the power drain explosion it's it's crazy how much force it gives. And then you have to get lucky here, kind of, uh, with the Chieftain. Because he had an invincibility here, but he just... No, it, actually, never mind, he had a flare in this one. I think, he, you know, in a previous segment that I did, that I scrapped, he had an invincibility. And if he does, you have to get lucky with him not activating it, which is pretty much never. So you have to get the 1 in 5 drop of a flare in order to, to kill him normally. You're gonna need the max hammer ammo. Oh yeah, I got an 87 hammer there, which yeah. technically you can get 90, but it's not. Uh, there's no benefit over. Yeah, yeah. it's not any different because uh, 
get the same amount of swings because it's five per swing. Get there as well to get ready to drive out. This quite a hard thing to do. Actually, drop hog in there and not having that hog blow up or anything. That's uh, quite tricky, and yeah. it saves a lot of time getting into that hog immediately. Yeah, you, you might have noticed like a change in the music uh, as I entered the tower. That was that was necessary because of checkpoints. Basically, it's not possible to get a checkpoint for that launch, and it's it's uh, would be probably take hundreds of hours to try to do that along with the, with driving the hog in because just getting the hog segment took several hours one to get it once probably, and yeah. same with the power drain took several hours to get it once. So just because of the checkpoints, I had to do some do do some weird stuff and. Uh, during that time, the music changed. So, th theoretically, you might be able to do a DC launch air into these Banshees instead of warning it from the Hornet, but it's never been done. <laughs> it's that never been also... done. It's it's uh, been theorized though. <sighs> but getting, uh, man I had to manipulate the the Banshee driver off the checkpoint. But that checkpoint I had, I could actually manipulate the the Banshee. Uh, almost every time and oh wait, this is my favorite segment of the level so i take the banshee in i splatter a bunch of these brutes <laughs> i get i bled a, get a deployable cover and then i leave one on the ground as well for later and then killing these drones i cannot believe those nades killed i think it's eight of them you need to kill that's amazing that's crazy. Right. yeah so originally I, I i was meaning to take the brute shot in but on this particular segment to pick up a brute shot, so I just went for it with the nades, and it somehow worked. <laughs> it is I, I I was in disbelief when I got that segment, and yeah, we do have to do this a little different, this fight a little different from from the regular Iron Strip. Oh yeah, so this is what I used the first DC for. Uh, this wasn't actually planned. That that sideways DC launch wasn't actually planned to be in the run originally. Um, but I figured out during the run that I could get two DCs here and save another couple of seconds by doing a sideways there. And then a quick little box launch here out of the tower. And we get that other DC right there that we left uh, outside. And then there's, there's not much going on here. We're just getting to the hog and we'll be, we'll be taking a hog to the next section. Side note there, but did like something actually shoot your flame grenade in the air there? Uh, I think it might have. I'm not. I'm not sure actually. I don't remember. <laughs> Can I? I just want to say, uh, Mib, you have run this level for a very long time. What are you thinking of all these segmented strats? Um, I'm thinking it's a lot, a lot more impressive than my attempt at them. I guess so. Unfortunately, there, there was a, originally a segmented strat here that was way cooler than this. Uh, nice uh, But yeah, we're we're doing the easy driving route here that would, you would normally see on easy. Um, I hit that rock a bit, but it doesn't actually lose time because at that point the hornets are, have actually spawned and you're just waiting for them to come down. And yeah, then you'll be seeing another clip here uh, with this other DC. Pretty standard stuff. You want to see this if you watch the IO. Also, Hon honestly, I want to shout DC's... out diagonal uh, movement. Oh yeah, flying diagonally is, I don't know, probably like 15% faster in the Hornet somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. DC, DC, clip DC clipping and MCC. I mean, it, it really has changed the face of the project since it started. You know, so many yeah. new strats came about because of the clips. Yeah. So there's a weird side effect here. If you save and quit in this Cortana moment. It goes all dark like this instead of having the actual Cortana moment. And yeah, this is this is when someone refers to God launch. This is the real God launch, right? Here. Oh. <laughs> oh! Oh my God! <laughs> no! Wow! Oh, that is oh disgusting. My. That is. Okay, wow. I, I thought yeah, I the power drain was my favorite launch in this, but that takes the takes the cake. <laughs> Mib special. Mib special. <laughs> That's, that's my, nice that's my one contribution to uh, Halo 3. Thank you. That is crazy that you managed to hit all the triggers on the way with, with that as well. That was so quick. Yeah. yeah. Hitting the triggers is the main problem with doing that, actually. Yeah. 
It was a nice low launch, so like you managed to like jump through them and jump Dude. through Dude. all the obstacles. And that return is also amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's worth noting that there are a ton of triggers you've heard us talk about. There are a ton of triggers that are very easy to miss on both those launches. Yeah. Uh, in which you soft lock the game, so. Yeah, well so that. Yeah, th so that IL time uh, was a 7.46. Isn't that like <laughs> a minute faster than, uh, than the record? That, yeah, it's a, it's a minute faster than easy. It's. What? Is it. Two, no, it's three minutes faster than Legendary, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this level, it has a bunch of Cortana moments and Grave Mine moments, but luckily the idea of this level is to skip as many of them as you can, and you do that by overlapping two of the slow moments. So jumping down this hole will actually skip this Cortana moment. So that's the idea behind this level. So right here, I'm just. I'm just gonna hope I don't die. I'm gonna pick up that DC to skip another moment coming up. It's and worth mentioning. Segment... That... Yeah, go ahead. It's just worth mentioning. It looks like he's having like a fun time running past all these enemies. You die 90% of the yeah, time. It's, yeah, it's it's really oh, hard. Way more and, this than is... and now this one, you have to bounce around a corner and down a hallway with about oh. nine million different objects. You can get a bad bounce off of, and that every bounce has to be perfect to get all the way to the door. And this overlap is a huge time save too. I think it's around 18 seconds, maybe above. It's a really yeah. big uh, yeah, overlap. Yeah, it also depends how far you go with it. Yeah. And so this segment coming up is probably the craziest, I think, in terms of how many times I've died. So I'm gonna do a box launch and during the box launch, you'll notice I throw a plasma grenade, and that's to set up another box on the return. And this uh, is going to be all one segment. This is one really long segment. Yeah. A so we'll, we'll be coming on. back through this level uh, later on. And then this panel launch that most people don't know about. This panel launch launches. Oh. Right. Yeah. So and now nice. normally, normally you would have camo, but we don't have camo right now. And so there's just a bunch of enemies kind of bombarding <laughs> you. It's it's basically impossible to not get blocked. And honestly, I can't believe I survived that. That is unbelievable how I survived. Yeah. And where was your last checkpoint? It was dropping into the hole before the first <laughs> box launch. So there's just a Jesus. ton of things that can go wrong. It is worth mentioning that Hammers, you can do all kinds of launches of, of crazy amounts of ob obstacles in Halo 3. Yeah. This is, I, I honestly love this trick. I think it's so cool. It's a fast tell reminiscence. And you are very close to death at this point. And I died so many times entering this room. And I'm actually going to do a backwards, a backwards DC launch through this moment. It's kind of hard to see what's happening, but I just launched down a hallway to get close to the door. Nice. And now coming up, I'm going to do a slight variation of reactor room launch. I'm going to set it up with a spike grenade. And now this method is actually, it's about one second slower than the normal launch, but with the stress that I've done previously, the net time save is actually better to, to do that alternate launch, so it right, all works it out. Is faster than that? That looks clean it, to me. It, it, it was clean, but the, an optimal normal launch is a bit faster, but yeah. Yeah, just because of the setup. Yeah, yeah. The setup time is just shorter mm -hmm. on the other one, but... All right, so, far, right? so now this might be my favorite segment of them all. So I'm going to have to launch through into the reactor room. And the door is open, by the way, which doesn't always happen. But So since the door is open, I can launch into the reactor room and go right to the button. And the amount of bounces you need to get of lucky bounces is insane. So just right over the chasm, right to the oh button. Oh my god, dude! That's insane. Mm -hmm. And that now is this cool. is all, this is all one huge segment because the back half has like no checkpoints. Yeah. So now I'm gonna have to kill the reactors as fast as possible, all without dying. So now I'm just hiding in the back. I'm I'm amazed you haven't died. <laughs> yeah. You, you still get hit as well. Yeah. And so there's not gonna be a checkpoint for a while. And getting that first launch was, it takes, it took so many tries. I don't even know how long it took. 
Yeah, getting getting to the console is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting too that many many runners in full game will lose their runs in this section because of the checkpoint issues. Yeah, so yeah, I'm finally going to get a checkpoint right here. And now remember that box I set up with the plasma? Well, I'm going to be doing a launch off of that box right here. <laughs> nice. Oh. Right through the enemies and then right up the hole. Amazing. That is Super clean. clean. So the rest of this level is just standard IL strats. There's chat not really a whole lot to go. Yeah. Shout out to chap coming up. <laughs> Get a small boost off of the carrier. And then here comes chap special, or else the run would be invalid if I didn't do. Yep. Yep. Oh, run is valid. I think I counted like maybe four of your launches in the DCs that you were completely blind in this. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome job. And that is the end of Cortana. This was a 5.48 in-game time. Nice. That is so quick. Way faster than easy. Mm -hmm. And now for Halo. Um, I'm going to preface this level by saying, or just talking about Spire fights. Uh, this, the fight itself is completely RNG dependent. So much in fact that the spawn rate is kind of random. They can spawn between half a second to, I think it was two seconds. They can spawn so, anywhere between that. Yeah. And so the fight can technically be six seconds faster or 18 seconds. So this, the spawn rate is, it's really random, honestly. So I went through about 10 different versions of this fight. And I just took the fastest one, because theoretically it could be faster, but there's just no way to predict of getting the fastest one and getting an optimal fight on your end, so I just took the fastest one. Well, the thing is you can't really get checkpoints in between waves that well, right. so you kind of have to... There's really no good way to segment this. So, right here, I'm actually going to kill Johnson in a specific way. And not only not only does that skip his dialogue after the fight, but I kill him in a way so that he falls off the cliff. And that will make him spawn inside the hallways, which will actually open one of the doors that takes forever to open. So that'll be a later segment. But pretty much for this fight, I'm really just killing things fast, hoping I don't die. So this is really just kind of what you would see in an I.O but I'm just doing it as fast as possible. Uh, can I say one thing I think is funny about Bungie's game design mentality here? Uh, we talked yeah. about how the, the enemy spawns are somewhat randomized. Uh, Bungie also has a cleanup script that will run if you take too long, because they didn't want the fight to stagnate. They always wanted enemies to come at you. So it's hard to optimize this and get it very fast. It's also difficult to make it go very slowly, because the game will eventually just push you forward so you can fight. <laughs> So you're you're very limited on ammo actually, so I had to come down and get some rocket ammo and a uh, shout out to this random flood who's just showing up here. Yeah. I think he's been there for the, from yeah. the beginning. Going going down to get ammo might look really slowly, but you have to remember that these these spawns are happening continuously. So it doesn't really lose time because you're waiting for the spawns to happen anyway. And the fact that you're down here just mealing everything, yeah, is amazing. Just right in the thick of it, yeah. So. There's so much going on. Yeah, and this fight is incredibly difficult to manage when you go fast because you ideally you need to kill certain amounts to actually make the um, next wave start. Because if you kill a certain number of enemies, it will then um, activate some uh, cleanup where actually you just kill the rest of the enemies and then the rest of the next wave. And so I, be have to I believe I, I get a deload here, which is what you want to get. You can't really see it happen, but some of the enemies were alive, but now they've all deloaded. And so this is, this is where uh, I killed Johnson comes into play. So I'm going to hammer launch down these hallways 
and Johnson will be right here, which will he would have already opened this door, so I can just immediately launch through that hallway. And then for some unknown reason, I really don't know why, but the second door is also open. And we knew this could happen, but I believe this is maybe one of two times that this trick yeah. has happened, where you both open doors. So yeah, that is actually a one in a lifetime event. So I had to take that segment. And uh, this is basically the auto scroller of the level, although you can technically lose time. Oh, you do so have a auto turret, yeah. Yeah, I don't have an auto turret, but I jump behind Spark to pick up Johnson's laser quicker, and that will allow me to shoot Spark on the very first moment I am allowed to. Yeah, so he's he's actually invincible right before that moment. So you could shoot him earlier, but he wouldn't take damage. And now I'm, now that Spark is dead, I'm going to set up the hammer right next to the door so that I can pick it up through the door during the next section. Yeah, and the, um, the hammer ammo pickup as well can be random. So mm -hmm. it can take quite a bit of time to actually just get a nice amount of hammer because the less you have, the less time you can actually save. And it, I actually had to get the exact amount, which is 88, because I had to line up the first half and back half. So I had to actually get the perfect 88. So by the way, these flood, those three flood uh, caused way more problems than you might think, because they can chase you all the way down this hallway. And so coming up is the God side segment, which looks really clean. I love this segment. Uh, I pick up these rockets, which I'll explain in, in a bit, but I can't actually use those. So there's about a million enemies here, and you just have to hope they don't shoot at you. And then when it comes to your part, you have to get the perfect slides right along the cliff side. Super. Wow. Oh, it's so still nice. Still getting shot. You gotta... I cannot believe then, those three yeah. flood didn't kill you. Mm -hmm. And now that checkpoint, I actually did that segment before and I didn't get a checkpoint, which was heartbreaking because I had to redo the segments again. So that checkpoint is actually kind of random. I cannot believe you just survived that. <laughs> Yeah, you just did that on zero life. So, anyways, uh, exactly. about those about those rockets, uh, those rockets are the saving grace of this run, uh, because I need them to double revert when I inevitably fail a segment to strat coming up. So that's why I'm not able to defend myself at all during any of those segments. That's really interesting. Yeah. So, um, now we're onto the warthog drive. We are going to be. For the first roundabout, we're going to be jumping on top of it, which is really difficult to pull off on MCC, just to do the, just due to the frame rate differences, and the way the Warthog physics work. Yeah, so. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if this is a history 100 strat originally, but he was the first one I saw do this skip. Mm -hmm. Wasn't yeah, this it is shifty? really difficult to pull off. Yeah, this is a shifty strat. No. Nice. nice. All right, so coming up will be the second roundabout skip, and this is probably the hardest segment in the entire level. Uh, I had to redo this segment twice, and both times they took about five and a half hours to get. And this is the reason why I picked up those rockets, because if you fail this trick, then you will likely get a checkpoint, and there's no way I'd, I'd be able to double revert to retry the, the segment. So that's the reason for those rockets that I picked up. Yeah, because there's no checkpoint management in this game. You basically mm. just have that checkpoint you're on, and the only way you can go back is by killing yourself repeatedly at least one uh, checkpoint in time. And so here is the, the trick. I'm just going to smash into the wall and hope I get a good bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, that is great. So how long did that take? Both times it took about five and a half hours. Just for that one trick. Beautiful. Just just to bounce up the wall. Mm -hmm. Five hours. Just to get a good bounce, that's it. So do you think you could do it in an IL now? No, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> that's the spirit. Maybe I'll do your hammer boost. You can actually take the hammer and uh, set up the Warthog and just launch it over, but that's slow. So coming up is a third roundabout skip. Shout out to Sleepless, by the way. We're ah, just going to skip it entirely. 
Just lethal's third. Lethal's third, that's it. That nice. always looks so close. Every really time nice you see that. Yeah. yeah, what's interesting about this level is the the panels will explode differently than on easy. And so there is one specific panel during that jump that's actually different. So that's why it's much easier to do that jump on easy. But there is one missing panel on legendary, which makes that jump so much harder. Have you skipped every single enemy spawn so far? Uh, I think so, maybe. The I, I haven't the seen a single... Has. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so all, yeah, all the enemy know. enemy spawn triggers are on the roundabouts, but you skip every single one of them. Yeah. And by the way, since this was all one long segment, ever since second roundabout, I finally get a checkpoint here. Oh my so god. That was all one huge segment. And now yeah, we're it looks like you get a lot of that stretch. long um, without checkpoints on this level. Yeah. Yeah, both on Cortana and this level, there's been a lot of long segments. Uh, it's so, worth noting too that many, uh, any if you ever try running Halo 3, inevitably at some point in your life you will lose a run to getting paneled by these flying panels at the end of the run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just knock yeah. you off. <laughs> and then Arbiter almost killed that Sentinel to where it would blow up and flip me over. So got lucky there. Alternatively, a Sentinel might just fire at you and you'll flip off and, and die in that way as well, it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice jump over the gap there. Yeah. 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 It's a nice gotta save those frames. And then, that is Halo 3 done segmented. GG. Woo! GG. And so, for that level, that was a 9.57 in game time. So just barely sub 10. And I believe that means every level in the game, sub 10. GG. Yes. Yeah. What was the overall in-game time as well? Finish. The in-game, some of in-game time. We'll yeah. probably put that in the description. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can well. I can check real quick what the some of in-game time was. Hang on. The big reveal. Uh. See. So, uh, all right. So. Was it fifty-five minutes thirty-six seconds? The some of in-game time. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and then the, yeah, so the, the the actual time is is in the game time is RTA minus loads. Um, yeah. yeah. So that adds a bit of time for, for like cutscenes and stuff like that. So the the end time is fifty eight minutes and seventeen seconds. Whew. Well done, everyone. So at least at least that's what it says on the on the spreadsheet. I don't know if it's been updated. But I think so. Can I just say, uh, it's really amazing to see this game go sub one hour um, as a segmented. It, it was kind of a dream a long time ago, but no one really knew if it was possible. But with MCC and the advent of DC clipping, along with just the, the talent of the runners going up immensely over the years, um, it's been really cool to see the time drop so low. Storm has passed. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, there is an easter egg here, if you can spot it. There, there, there are a few <laughs> easter eggs, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember those that have fallen in combat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd just like to give a huge shout out to uh, the Halo 3 speedrunning community for being so encouraging. And when I started running, I know Danza was... Uh, we started out in Skype video groups, I think. It wasn't even Discord yeah. back then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we races, man. yeah, and and everyone's just been really kind and encouraging, and and uh, we always love new runners coming in and helping people learn the game. Um, I've really enjoyed being a part of this community. I just wanted to thank you guys. It's been a pleasure having you, Power. Thank you so much. Thank you for actually organizing us all to do to get this sorted. Yeah, it is a little crazy to think that this project has been going for, for eight years through all the uh, different versions of the game. So, um, yeah, it's been a long down one. At some point, yeah, we weren't even sure it was going to get finished. Yeah. yeah, and and I think it's worth mentioning too, we're right on, the, as we record this, we're right on the advent of Master Chief Collection being released for PC. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so we really wanted to finish this. This is kind of the end of the console Sega for the segmented run of Halo 3. Uh, in the future, there may be a PC version, but we'll wait and see as time goes on. Yeah, yeah. If PC, we, if we PC would allow things on PC, of course, we'll have checkpoints. It'll be easier to do things, and uh, yeah, there's some theoretical stress that we can potentially be way more challenging. By your word. Yeah, yeah, but um. Yeah, there's still some stuff we can do, but the amount of strats and everything I was even uh, contained in this run was mind-blowing, to be honest. The amount that's uh, done in here. Cool. Well, uh, thank you, Dark, for editing this and putting it all together. Yeah. No problem, guys. No problem. You. you guys have done an amazing you job. Much, Every one of you. Cool. Thank then, you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that is Halo 3 done segmented.